we're live again, and I'm very pleased to, to welcome back uh, Thomas Kuchik from, from AXA. Uh, Thomas, uh, it was great to hear from you at API Day Singapore last year, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more about uh, what is uh, how AXA has advanced your, your API agenda um, in, uh, in, in the past year. Thanks very much. Thank you, thank you, John, for for introduction, and uh, thank you once again for inviting me uh, to the event, so I can share our experience and what we have been doing uh, uh, in the uh, how we have been transforming the uh, our company, and as well uh, how the landscape of the industry is changing, driven by the by the API. So, uh, before we're going to start, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tomasz Kurczyk. Um, for some of you that are familiar with the, the, those different names and with uh, different sounds, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely Polish. Um, I'm, I'm a geek, geek at heart and technologist. Um, uh, my background is actually in computer science, uh, uh, telecommunication and electronics. Uh, then, and I moved to, uh, later on to the more to the, the business side. But I'm real geek at heart, and and staying very close to the, to the technology is something that is uh, to especially uh, extremely relevant in uh, today. And to be honest, I'm surprised that I'm working in insurance. I've been working in AXA for uh, more than eight years, and every day I'm surprised that uh, about this. And uh, but it's surprise is, is positive because the field is uh, is exciting, and a lot of things are happening. So you know, just just in summary, what I'm doing in my day job is uh, mostly focusing on the PNL strategy, technology growth, custom and innovation. Um, outside of uh, of my day job, I'm trying to help uh, develop and advance the fintech ecosystem through my involvement in SFA Singapore Fintech Associations. And uh, today, I will have a pleasure to to share how the APIs are driving. Uh, force behind the transformation of the, the insurance industry. So let's let's start uh, talking about money. You know, it's uh, it's always important topic uh, on top of everyone's mind. And when you look purely at the money, insurance is a huge industry. Globally, uh, it represents close to six trillion uh, US dollars of uh, gross return premium um, uh, across all the line of business and um, all the all the countries. So it's a huge industry by, by the definition. But in the same time, insurance in the industry as we know it, it's it's uh, characterized by similar uh, similar issues as any legacy uh, legacy industry with high fixed cost structure, low flexibility driven in most of the cases by the legacy system and processes. It's capital intensive, but as well as uh, it's highly regulated. That that imposes the uh, uh, high bar barriers for entry and 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 difficult to to drive that change across the industry. But what is interesting in for most of the past few hundred years, the uh, insurance industry was relying on one-to-one -one relationships. Those relations were between you, intermediary and the customer, but as well as intermediary as uh, 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 insurer and re insurer and reinsurer. This was a key, uh, maintaining and driving those relationship was one of the key steps for the success and part of the business model. It was really at the heart of the business model of the, of the insurance that was aggregating, the pulling the risk, and then dealing, being the intermediary with the different parties to help to, to ensure the different type, types of the risk. As we know, the world moved in and today, almost everything is based on many to many relationships. And uh, another difference is really that the, those relationships, in most of the cases, are very spontaneous and dynamic in nature. In one instance, you might be provider, or in another uh, uh, instance, you might be consumer. So this is typical in the world that we are living full of ecosystems, marketplaces, one-sided, two-sided marketplaces, the dominating uh, our business and, and lives. And uh, uh, what is extremely important and, and new is the fact that a lot of those relationships are completely new and they help to create economical values between pr uh, previously unlinked parties. And it's all happening thanks to technology and, and thanks to connectivity <coughs> provided by, uh, by capabilities like APIs. 
So what? So this is uh, creates pressure to change, and this despite of significant obstacles and typical obstacles for insurance as an industry would be really the regulation and legacy. The good news is that market forces are prevailing, and uh, what does it mean that? the need for increased access, need for increased convenience, customer experience, customer value is really pushing the boundaries, pushing the industry uh, industry uh, to change. So it creates a clear need and push uh, for the transformation. Some people call it digital transformation. Personally, uh, I think it's a more of a buzzword and, uh, and it's overused. But the bottom line is that uh, the major change needs to happen and uh, when I'm trying to explain to people close, close to it or sometimes not really, really familiar with the concept is it's all about helping organization to reach their full potential in the digital, uh, digital age because in the end this is, this is the ultimate goal of what we are doing and adapting the, how the business work and operate. And of course the underlying catalyst for this is emergence of API platforms, strategies and move towards the ecosystems. So it's some people uh, get mistaken that is this is part of this change. We need to move every organization to become a tech company, which is actually not true because it's all about the companies need to become digital businesses. It's not everyone going to be uh, be tech company. It's and it's not uh, not the end goal. But how actually to how how to do it actually and and how to approach this? So typically we have a three prong approach to drive the transformation. And this is what we see in the insurance, but as well as in other industries. First one is, is about tech enablement. Is That means leveraging modern tools and technologies and developing your own capabilities and skills to apply to the business, to take the full potential. Second one is really the uh, digital business optimization. It's making business more efficient in using the existing resources and operating, leveraging the potential of the technology. And the last one is really the digital business transformation is changing the business models and revenue models. Uh, in, in AXA, we have done it focusing uh, in parallel on tech enablement, business optimization, then moving to the next stage to business transformation, but it is extremely context-reliant uh, uh, and different permutations are possible and we have different success stories across. Starting with the, uh, and you can imagine today uh, during the COVID, some people would approach the same uh, problem differently because if COVID disrupt my distribution, how can I how can I sell or deliver the product to the um, or in many cases I cannot deliver the product or my service to the hands of the customer? A lot of fo focus and emphasis would be on the business transformation. How can I identify new revenue sources through the digital uh, channels? While in normal times, when the company is doing well, we will go through the long transformation period, they will say, let's do first tech enablement because we need to do our tech refresh and this will be our objective and, and others will focus on a purely business optimization. So that's why it's really, there's no right or wrong solution. It really depends on where your company is and what's your focus. So here we are getting closer to the uh, to the APIs and and uh, how uh, APIs are the driving, uh, driving force behind it. So, um, not surprisingly, um, this is driven both inside out and outside uh, outside in. And uh, unfortunately, there's not too many definitions of the of the open insurance as a concept. Uh, the only one that I managed to found is, is really about the open banking, and and it's very very straightforward. Talking about APIs that are allowed to connect uh, different different parties. How I I'm, in, trans, I'm trying to, when I'm trying to explain this to people that are not familiar. It's uh, if I would like to explain it to my mother. Is is in the end, it's all about case of insurance is about unbundling and making insurance available outside of insurance institutions. And this is uh, and so let's let's dive a bit deeper in, uh, uh, deeper into the, the topic. Cycle of bundling and unbundling. It's it's quite familiar, and we have seen it uh, playing and repeating itself many times across uh, different ver uh, verticals, different industries over time. And typically, you have uh, fully integrated models. Then it's becoming unbundled. And in case of insurance, it, what we see is, as example of unbundling, it's uh, deploying the digital distribution channels or solutions only focus on this. 
providing the digital advisory and product com uh, comparison. Those will be typical aggregators and, and services that provide product comparison, launching a new verticalized products, uh, services uh, carrying out part of the operations or claims processing and so on. And then it's what is happening when the, and today we are starting, we can see clearly this phase uh, happening is when the rebundling is happening because the maturity and experience have been gained. The solutions are um, uh, good enough to recompose the value chain of the insurance and uh, uh, recompose it in much more efficient and effective uh, manner to deliver more value to the customer, but as well as, uh, as, well as uh, to the consumer. And in many cases, this recomposing and rebounding is dynamic. And of course, it's powered by the technology and, and APIs where you can choose at point of time what is the best provider or best solution to address, uh, to complete uh, either the transaction or uh, complete the, uh, the process. Uh, the second part, what we uh, discussed before was, was uh, about getting the insurance closer. And uh, as a relevant, as a parallel, you can take the, the f uh, concept or phrase coined by the DBS about the making the banking transparent. So this is quite similar. It's really embedding the insurance into every single service or interaction. And uh, today uh, it's becoming more and more relevant from two, uh, re uh, because of two reasons. One is because in many cases, customers don't understand what's the risk. So you are able to provide a uh, relevant risk insurance uh, protection or prevention at the moment of action on when it is uh, when it is relevant for the customer but as well as on the second driver uh, and motivation is that in many industries and uh, and uh, verticals uh, it is estimated around 50 percent of the revenue will be generated through the different fintech solution financial services that are packaged or bundled with other services so that is this is very very important uh, driver for it and of course Without having a vibrant uh, uh, API ecosystem, it's, it wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be possible. So, what is the uh, the reason for the uh, what is the motivation for for industry to to do it? It's once again going back to the basics. It's about reducing costs, increasing access, and growing uh, growing actual uh, uh, actual innovation. Uh, because suddenly you can recompose the value chains and innovate on top of it. Because we are moving to the Ecosystem and platform uh, platform concepts. This is this is only possible with the vibrant and fluid API ecosystems, and this is a key enable a key point uh, inflection point uh, uh, at the moment because uh, different companies are uh, delivering different set of APIs and usually those are very specific to the different line of business and connecting with the different parts of the value chain on the other hand from prop tech, health tech and, and uh, traditional businesses. But uh, without lack of the transparent uh, standardization both in terms of the API uh, standards, uh, domain uh, data but as well as uh, data exchanges uh, it is something that is uh, much slower than in case of banking, where this drive for the standardization is much, uh, much faster. There are some initiatives that, that we can see across, uh, driven uh, in many cases by the regulator in terms of the data portability, but as well as defining the ecosystems. And in Singapore, uh, there is uh, one of the initiatives uh, under, uh, undergoing. It's a combined initiative between the banking and, and insurance. Uh, driven by MAS and uh, ABS to cover the standardization that will be a real, uh, real uh, game changer for, for the industry. So where we are left with, uh, with this approach as an insurance, as an industry, so you need to reposition it. So insurance needs to reposition itself. Uh, talking um, uh, and that typically four key areas where the repositioning is happening. One, one is embedding what we were discussing before embedding your product and services, uh, integrate externally. Uh, second one is, is about orchestration. Uh, if, especially this is uh, relevant across healthcare because around 60% to 60 to 70% of every single dollar that is exchanged in healthcare passes through the uh, insurance. And just because of the nature of those transactions and how it is organized, insurance is an opportunity to play as an orchestrator between the service providers, but as well as uh, payers and uh, patients. 
so there are quite a few models happening and the different integrated model uh, where either the insurers are starting to purchase the networks of the healthcare providers or develop them from scratch to integrate the model. Uh, the next one is uh, to aggregation, especially in terms of the data, and providing this packaging and providing the value to the to the consumers in different facets. I'm sorry, I'm going quite fast because uh, uh, we had some some technical issues, so so I'm trying to go fast through all the concepts to at least go to the meaty parts of the te uh, tech uh, technology and our less lessons learned. So try to hold, uh, uh, stay stay with me. Um, and uh, the last one is, is really about the extending the model and sometimes pivoting to the adjacent models, start running them, acquiring or integrating closely um, and uh, complementing your value offer. This is what we see once again in healthcare where uh, we see services around the managed healthcare, uh, mental uh, wellness, uh, wellness overall when the service is being extended uh, by connecting the different uh, different parties. This is go goes back to the one of the key questions. Okay, this is the strategically it's all clear. We know where to go. What what are the changes? Uh, really driven by the by the dev uh, development of the APIs. But when it comes to the value creation, traditionally it was really focused on three components. You had your product or service, you had your partners, typically people who will help you to distribute this and the customers. And this was enough to, to run the business. Today, it's the key change. We have two additional components. One is really the data and platform and APIs that helps you to really, that are cornerstones and and uh, and critical components in order to, to develop and implement those new business and new revenue models. So when we talk, go back to the, when I said that those are the uh, key components and, and really uh, critical for, for move into the, uh, along the transformation journey, it is really because APIs and platforms, they enable every single part of the value chain, starting from the business model, product distribution, up to the, the customer experience and uh, user experience. What to do if, uh, how to approach this and what to do if, if your backend speaks in COBOL. And this is, unfortunately, it's a still reality for many, uh, many financial services industries, but not, not only. And of course, if your backend speaks COBOL, that doesn't send uh, APIs. And, uh, uh, and this is a, a issue that many companies and teams have been struggling for the longest time and basically it boils down to the two two options that you have. Either you modernize your core or you replace your core. Unfortunately, both of the options are not very, very attractive uh, because they are very expensive and they bear a lot of risk because sometimes the risk adjusted uh, ROI is uh, lower uh, then the ROI that you will get out of the uh, going through the exercise and based on the history you don't see too many success successes and people starting the process don't see the end uh, the end of it so we took actually the, uh, the third approach of uh, the third approach of modernizing the uh, modernizing the core uh, which is what we call progressive restoration that we was executed focusing on uh, examining our business model and adopting the microservice model to the value chain and offline operation, identifying the microservices and tasks that will be automated and start approaching it in two, uh, two ways uh, stream. One, building the platform from ground new from the scratch. And the second is building the legacy core and APIs. Unfortunately, it is very tedious, painful and, and expensive process still, but this at least gives you, uh, gives you uh, some le uh, leeway to uh, to uh, deploy and deliver your your set of APIs. So we started in 2015. Today we go, went through the full journey, and we had the uh, fully microservice based API first, uh, and even driven uh, driven um, uh, setup that uh, delivers to us scalable module and reusable uh, reusable platform, where where we derive the clear uh, value for the for the business and API uh, infrastructure and, and setup. So, Thomas, um, I, I'm very, uh, very conscious that you've, you've yes. painted a picture of 
the transformation of the, the industry, uh, unbundling of insurance, but also seeking to embed uh, insurance into uh, the, the customer journey, the journeys for, for lots of different customers um, in, in every journey. And then you, you painted a, um, you, you described the, the key challenge of the, the core systems for, for insurance and, and then how you come about it. If, if you had to summarise, what what do you see as uh, what um, what AXA is going to do next um, to to achieve uh, to achieve this vision? So, to be, be short, so we developed a full fully full uh, digital fully transactional digital platform, hundreds of microservices, hundreds of API endpoints that are being in production used internally and externally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're focusing on the private and, pro- uh, and protected APIs, but if you, the final, what we learn is this approach is good up to the point where you reach the limit of the scalability and what you can innovate because it's yeah. uh, bogged down by the, the core. So mm-hmm. today, actually, we reach already the last two years, the limits, and we now we are replacing the cores because the, uh, uh, the our approach gave us mm-hmm. ability to do it uh, in faster and less painful way, but mm-hmm. as well as in the same time, uh, uh, you cannot escape. You need to do it mm-hmm. because the, the limit of the this, uh, this strategy and approach, uh, and uh, even though it's fully transactional on the top, you can connect to the partners, the, the value, the innovation, it's uh, it's defining the bottom, um, uh, mm-hmm. the threshold for what you, how you can progress. Well, thanks, thanks very much for those, uh, those insights, Thomas, um, and uh, appreciate you, um, you sharing that, that with us. Um-